it seems like there's a little bit of optimism this morning. Is it all because there's a late night meeting or am I wrong and am I just being too Polonius and seeing optimism? I mean, I think the fact that they care enough to stay up late and talk about it is a good sign for everybody. I think that there is a slight sort of schizophrenia in the markets because on the one hand, people have been, you might say, surprisingly relaxed about the continued bad state of negotiations, the fact that we still don't have a deal with Greece. And you sort of say, well, that's because people think that even if something terrible happened in Greece, somehow the rest of the system is now insulated from it and it wouldn't cause the same damage that we've had before. On the other hand, we seem to want them to really care mm. and to really reach an agreement, which suggests that it is important to have an agreement and that there is something at stake here. So I think we can't decide whether it's not such bad news if something bad happens to Greece or just good news if they're trying very hard to prevent that bad thing. I think what's maybe a little bit misunderstood in the way the negotiations have played out is that the International Monetary Fund has been portrayed as this playing a hard line and I think that's true but one of the reasons that they're holding this hard line is because they don't want to sign up to a deal that they don't think in the long run will be sustainable and I think many of the senior figures in the IMF think they have in the past agreed to too much debt and a deal that didn't add up for Greece. So it's interesting because hmm. they, I think, would like to see more debt reduction as part of this deal and the Germans are And yet their couch is the hardliners, yes. is, is, is driving the hardest bargain. Yeah. Jim, when you look at what exactly do you think was discussed last night? I mean, we know they were discussing Greece, but have they sent anything over for Greece to review? Are they talking Well, they were talking through the night. To deal with it? Right. After the leaders left, they were talking through the night. And uh, I, I suspect nothing has been transmitted to Athens yet because nothing has been leaked yet. Right. And it, we would know from somewhere uh, if, if a message had been sent, if there, if there was actually a proposal, we would have had a hint of it. That is an editor who's confident in his reporting that. I mean, that, you know, if we haven't heard about it, it didn't happen. I, you, know, that's, you, know, you know, Hans, those of, those of us who've been at it since 2009, you know, we've seen this before. You'll recall in 2011, there was a, there was a secret meeting in Luxembourg uh, that, they had, that Juncker actually had to lie about or felt compelled to lie about. And similarly, this, this, along the same parallel track, sh um, this is uh, shortly before Angela Merkel is to host the G7. Right. And she doesn't want Greece to, there's a school of thought that she wants Greece settled so it doesn't interfere with her G7. You'll recall in, in also in 2011, Nicolas Sarkozy uh, hosted a G20, where basically Greece uh, dominated right. those few days and it knocked him off the uh, world stage and it really annoyed him. But Jim, so what you're suggesting is that they did send some kind of proposal? We think that this is something that, Not yet. that the creditors Not yet, but the, are, but are offering or talking about offering to Greece? The fact that the meeting happened and, and got out, the, the fact that the meeting, the fact of the meeting was leaked suggests that they're trying to send a signal. Uh, Tsipras in Athens wants there to be a political level deal. He wants us out of the hands of the technocrats. He wants us out of the hands of the finance ministers because he knows the politics are you for a deal. And if, uh, you know, if, if Merkel and Draghi will just tell their underlings, just settle it. We don't, you know, here's our red line. No, if the only red line is, let's say, no debt uh, write downs. Then just get it done. Kind of, just yeah, and yet, uh, Wolfgang Schäuble wasn't at the meeting. Um, what's, what's your take on that? Would Schäuble have complicated it? Do you buy into this line that Schäuble is driving a harder bargain than Malcolm? I think it's one of those things where if you are, I mean, one of the reasons why you might take some optimism from this in terms of the determination to reach a deal is that if you, at this stage in the negotiations, you need to have the principals, you need to have the top guys and women there. And I think that's more the point than whether or not Schäuble is there, whether he would actually okay. have complicated things. Stephanie, what does it mean for the markets? Right, so we're, there's this deadline <laughs> on June the 5th, it's Friday, it's a deadline that may, can be extended or we may not find out if they don't pay on Friday for a couple of months. But if I'm a market participant, do I stay put, do I sell, do I buy euro on, on you know, possible euro weakness on the back of it? Yeah, I think, I mean, it goes back to this sort of difficult balance that people have been, right, I mean, we had a lot of volatility a few weeks ago in European markets. I think there is a sort of nervousness, we think that, the world is safe for some kind of Greek mishap, but we're not 
quite confident enough, especially when we have still some disappointing noises from global growth. You know, we've had not just the US growth disappointment, but other parts of the world as well. Europe surprisingly resilient, and we're hoping to see a change from last year with the second quarter growth still remaining decent in Europe, despite a slowdown in other parts of the world. We haven't quite seen that yet, so I think there's just a nervousness that although we don't think Greece by itself can cause a major problem, or at least as much of a problem as it did, might have done a couple of years ago, we know, we're conscious that there are, re there are vulnerabilities already in the system which might be triggered by a problem in Greece. You know, Jim, you kind of hinted this earlier. You've been through one or two of these rodeos. How many times have you been wrong? We're going to have an opportunity to come clean. How many times have you been this wrong like when you back, said... Jim. When Can you I said, borrow your tie? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> that makes me the editor. And then, when, no. when, how many times have you been wrong when you thought the deadline was final? Actually, it's not about the deadline, but I remember in 2012, we took a pool of reporters and, and editors who were covering it. That in massive sums? Is Greece... Um, cups of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, who is, whether Greece, by the end of 2012, would Greece be in or out? And um, I confess I was wrong okay. in, that, in that pool. I mean, to be fair, at the time, most of the markets were wrong as well. I'm sticking up for you, Jim. I was. Thanks, friends. Well. I liked how the confession right. was done in a lower voice. He almost yeah. whispered it. Yeah, but, but on live TV. Yeah, well, fair. All right. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much.